Now for Global Business Update, Rochus Udiri joins us. Good morning, Rochus. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning to all morning, our viewers out there. We begin with uh, what is uh, a packed uh, week. Uh, as far as what to watch this week, uh, we'll be getting earnings from Amazon uh, later on. Um, how is Amazon Web Services doing, the cloud computing division? Um, uh, you know, how are they integrating artificial intelligence in order to sell more of their products? How are they doing in terms of ad sales? That's what analysts are going to be looking for. Uh, later on today. Then the FOMC, Federal Open Market Committee, they've begun their meeting uh, uh, today. They will be bringing us uh, a decision tomorrow. It is expected uh, that they will hold rates, but everyone is going to be parsing through the language of Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell. You've seen inflation still remain sticky. Um, you have seen <clears throat> you know, Q1 GDP preliminary numbers slow down just a bit. But the labor market is still strong. So you've got all these conflicting um, data points from the United States that some point to a, a, a rate cuts and some point to holding and some pretty hawkish people are saying Fed might even have to hike. So, you know, all that is going to be in, in view uh, tomorrow at Jerome Powell's uh, press conference. Uh, Thursday, another big one. We get earnings from Apple. Uh, Apple, of course, you know, has been struggling a bit in terms of the iPhone sales, according to CounterPoint Research, falling by 20% in the first quarter of this year in China. Uh, you've also got Apple abandoning their car. You've got Apple looking to try and find innovation somewhere. Of course, we heard just yesterday, we talked about this. They've been talking to OpenAI about integrating ChatGPT with Siri on the iPhone uh, 16. I'm particularly excited about the iPhone 16 coming out later on uh, this year. Uh, also, Apple has their um, iPad um, events coming up on May the seventh again ipads don't really amount to much when it comes to the contributing to total revenue and then you've got the uh the wwdc the, the worldwide developer conference coming up in june so a lot is going to be you know analysts are going to be parsing through apple's uh quarterly earnings to see how well they did and then friday we get the u.s jobs uh reports uh for april uh in terms of how you know it was three hundred and three thousand. Uh, back in March, is that going to be revised upwards or downwards? The markets are looking for about somewhere around 250. Some other bullish analysts are saying somewhere around 270. And then I'm going to be bringing you the sweet tooth earnings. I'm looking forward to that. We've got a whole number of eateries reporting earnings this week. Domino's, uh, McDonald's, Mondelez, Hershey's chocolates, a whole number of them. So I think we'll start off, kick that off uh, tomorrow because I, I have a sweet tooth myself. We go to Asia. I think we're going to focus a lot on Asia. China's uh, Purchasing Managers Index, factory activity, slowing down just a tad. Remember, with your PMI, if you're below 50, you are contracting. If you're above 50, you are expanding. And you saw April coming in at 50.4 points. Your forecast was 50.3. Uh, the March number was 50.8. So coming down you know, just a bit there. So the China story is still very much with us. Slower economy. The property sector still has a lot of problems, and you have seen the People's Bank of China not really want to boost, put too much stimulus in certain areas. They've decided to just pretty much cut rates to see how that can work things out. So, and then, of course, the geopolitical concerns uh, with the United States. Uh, we go to uh, Japan. It's emerging now that it looks like the Japanese government did intervene in the currency markets uh, yesterday. And Japan was on a holiday yesterday, so the markets were closed, but currencies keep, that's equity markets were closed, they've reopened today, but currencies still trade. So, you know, um, you know you've got uh, the two gentlemen there on your screen, uh, Masato Kanda, he is, of course, the Vice Finance Minister for International Affairs. And again, you've got, of course, uh, Fumio Kishida, the Prime Minister. Both of them uh, were asked by international media, did you intervene in financial mark in the currency markets uh, yesterday? They denied it. They refused. No, sorry, not that they denied it. Excuse me. They refused to comment on it. They just said they wouldn't speak. But, you know, we talked about the Japanese yen and the sharp fall. I mean, it went to 160. And then within just a number of hours, it went from 160 to 156. The Wall Street Journal is uh, writing that it thinks that, um, according to its sources, there was an intervention um, in the currency market. So we'll see how things continue to trade um, with respect to uh, the amount of um, how the currency moves going forward. The rate decision from the U.S., by the way, is going to be very key in how Japan trades because of something I've talked about, the carry trade, the difference between interest rates in U.S. and Japan. If Jerome Powell suggests 
in the, in the long run that rates are going to remain high, that means that Japan is still going to see some weakness in terms of its currency because investors will move their yen assets over to the U.S. to take advantage of, uh, of higher rates. We've seen that happen even here in Nigeria with the CBN and all that other stuff in terms of interest, increasing rates. Um, we go to Korea now with Samsung. You heard President Tinibu's comments when he was talking to Samsung about investing in Nigeria. Samsung um, is saying that they are eyeing this, this end of this second quarter to release uh, the, uh, a new AI memory uh, uh, chip uh, that they want to put out there, the HBM3E. Um, and essentially, according to sources, NVIDIA seems to be one of their customers that might be getting a hold of this chip. So, you know, again, Samsung, one of the, the largest chip makers in the world, a lot of their chips are in their phones and other electronics. Uh, so they are weighing heavily. And by the way, let's get to Samsung's earnings um, for the uh, first quarter of the year. Uh, group revenue, this was all in Korean won. By the way, for those that are curious, the Korean won trades at 1,357. Uh, to the dollar, almost 1,360. Just to remind you that it's not just about where currency is, it's about your exports, right? So I, we, con we converted this over to dollars. So group revenue, $53 billion, a 12% increase. Their operating profit was massive. I mean, 931% climb to $4.8 billion. We included their device solutions department um, the units. The device solutions unit of Samsung is where these chips are made. Now, you can notice there that the revenue was at $17 billion, a 68% rise for their device solutions department. The operating profit was a loss in the first quarter of last year. It swung to a profit of $1.4 billion, net profit at $5 billion. So uh, pretty, pretty good for Samsung uh, there. Now, to Nigeria, uh, engineer Benga Debayo, who, of course, is the uh, chairman of Alton, the Associated of License, Association of Licensed Telco Operators of Nigeria, has come out with an op-ed. He's been talking to the media about how telcos need to raise prices. He's talking about the operating environment and and how the regulatory environment is not allowing the telecommunications operators to raise prices. So a couple quotes from him. He says, to kick off, while the digital innovation in Nigeria is enabling exciting new possibilities, there is a tendency to focus on those opportunities to the detriment of the core infrastructure on which the digital innovation is riding. He continues in uh, a second quote here. He says, the continued development of core infrastructure has to be sustainable. And over the last few months, we've begun to see the challenges that the operators are facing. He talks about vandalism of infrastructure. He talks about inflation. He talks about the exchange rates. He also uh, you know, talked about the inability to raise, uh, uh, to raise tariffs. He then says the entire ecosystem is battling with a range of challenges that must be addressed. If we fail to do so, the downstream impact on innovation will be severe. And I think here is the real crux uh, of, the, uh, of his op-ed. He said, um, essentially, we fully understand and appreciate the financial stress that Nigerians are experiencing today. The cost of living is the single most significant factor in most people's daily lives, but those people are still able to enjoy the benefits that connectivity brings at the price they paid before those challenges became so acute. Finally, he says we need to find a long-term sustainable and manageable solution to the problem. Prices will need to rise, but actions need to be taken in a measured way through sustainable conversations and partnership with the government. It's time to address this head-on. The, you know, that's, that's the issues that we're facing. I mean, you're, you're very spot on. I saw the open rotos and he just told the honest truth. We cannot deceive ourselves. Even prior to this time, they are going through a lot. You forget how out and how to fight the banks to be able to give them their money for USSD and other things like that. You forget the other challenges they And they face. haven't paid them back. And they haven't still paid them back. Because I remember uh, Pantami, the former communication minister, just, you know, just held peace amongst them. It wasn't that anything was done. You remember all the challenges they have facing with the mass. You remember the challenges where we don't have power and they have to power with diesel and the part of diesel has gone on astronomically. So these are challenges they face and we can't deceive ourselves. I mean, Rotus, I saw your job as regards the, you know, the Korean war, but you know most of these currencies are deliberately, artificially depressed against the dollar to be able to play the international game of exports. Just like Japan too, artificially depresses it's not that if Japan rallies the economy, it can't be one to one with the dollar or one to ten with the dollar. But it needs its currency to be depressed against the dollar to be able to get its exports cheaper. You know, that's what accounted for the Louvre Accord, uh, you know, the Plaza Hotel Agreement and things like that. So it's international diplomacy. But what is instructive about those Samsung numbers is the fact that 
Road to just imagine if we had five businesses like Samsung that are doing net profit of five billion USD, bring that money into the economy. We'll not have almost of these challenges. So we need to grow businesses and we need to grow infrastructure. Okay, first, let me uh, comment on uh, Benga Adebayo's uh, statement, this article that you have quoted. He wrote that article within the context of the uh, telecom operators in Nigeria seeking the leave of the uh, National Communications Commission to increase tariffs. And the reasons they gave are the same reasons that uh, Benga Adebayo has articulated in his article about challenges that they face with taxation, multiple taxation, cost of regulatory compliance, and also, you know, lack of infrastructure. And he stressed the point again, how connectivity has helped. And the question you ask is, how did we survive in this country when there were no telephones, uh, when no uh, smartphones or, 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 or no, no, no telecom? I once wrote an article about that when I asked the question, how did we survive? When, did we, when we did not have these uh, smartphones that we all carry around? He has a good point. But the other question is, what ideology is Nigeria pursuing with regard to its uh, market forces, deregulated environment? Multi-choice just said the other day that it is going to increase prices on May 1. Yesterday, we had a report of a court in Abuja, saying that multi choice cannot increase prices. The same argument that the telecom operators are, co are coming up with is the same argument that multi choice is coming up with about a difficult, disenabling business environment. So, how do you have a government, on one hand, that says we welcome business, we welcome investment, and at the same time says we will fix prices? So, I see a contradiction there in terms of the business ideology. That is what has to be revise. Will government come up tomorrow and also say a court has said the telecom operators cannot increase prices? That's the dilemma that I see in that direction. As for Samsung. Now, Samsung, uh, what you left out is that uh, Samsung uh, in the uh, post, uh, in the uh, first quarter earnings is predicting or has reported 32.8 percent increase in profit. The business seems to be doing well. The same business that didn't do well in 2023 as a result of post-COVID recovery. But now, first quarter of 2024, we see that business doing very well. Why? Because of investments and optimism about artificial intelligence. And there is a lot of optimism from Samsung Electronics, the leading chip maker in the world from, uh, from South Korea, telling us that 2024 they will do well, you know, not just from their basic business, but also from artificial intelligence. So we see artificial intelligence uh, driving process. And still talking about first quarter uh, earnings, HSBC also seems to be doing well. And Elon Musk, who visited China, uh, you know, uh, seems to have uh, been able to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's FYD, you know, to get, uh, uh, Security clearance. Without security clearance, the you know uh, stock price of uh, uh, Tesla went up. So these are some of the things I see within the uh, business space. But as for the Benga Adibayo uh, uh, take, we will see if the Nigerian government will not come up with a court ruling and say you can't increase uh, uh, prices. Thank you.